Well, howdy everyone. Uh, I thought I'd go ahead and get started with this. Telling my story, my life. Uh, you know, if anyone's interested. Uh, first off, my full name is Berlin Rodney Shortridge. B-E-R-L-I-N. And I'm named after my dad, which is Berlin Shortridge. Uh, uh, my mom, her name is Linda Sue Johnson Shorty. Uh, my grandparents on my mom's side is Roy Johnson and Hazel Ruth, I think it's Ruth, Ruth Johnson, uh, uh well, Childress, she was a Childress and then a Johnson. Uh, on my dad's side, you've got uh, Will, uh, Willie Shortridge, and my mama was uh, Berthy Street Shortridge. Uh, I was born October 30th, 1969, uh, in Richlands, Virginia, at the old Maddie Williams Hospital. It's tore down now. Uh, they turned it into uh, City Hall. Um, I was raised, uh, well, first year of life, <laughs> I was uh, raised at the uh, a little white house across from my Mama Shortridge and Papa Shortridge's that belonged to them. I lived there for, I guess we lived there for about a year from what I understand what Mom and Dad said. Now, when Mom had me, she, uh, she hemorrhaged real bad. They wasn't expecting her to make it. But she made it, thank goodness. But she reminds me all the time when I fuck up that I, I try to kill her. I almost killed her, you know. That's something to say to a child growing up and let them know that because of you, you could have killed your mom. But hey, I digress. When I was born, my daddy was working at the old Coca-Cola plant down in Van Sant, Virginia. Um, within a year of me being born, he got a job at the uh, at a uh, coal mines over in Harmon. My uncle Mimp. Uh, got him a job there And he didn't stay there long till he got him a job working at Beatrice Coal uh, Beatrice Mines there at uh, King Mountain, Virginia That was Island Creek Coal Company and Daddy worked there from I guess 1970 1971 to uh, What 1990 I think 1990 is when he retired. Cause he he didn't he was he didn't retire long. He wasn't gonna retire long before he passed away in '92. But uh, I'm trying to think, <laughs> my first five years I don't remember much. Uh, I do remember Daddy taking us, uh, taking me and my brother, because my brother he was born in October 22nd of '71. I'm two years older than him. Uh, I do remember them bringing him home. Uh, he was a fat baby, as they like to call it. I weighed seven pounds and he weighed ten pounds, so. I guess, you know, you women understand that. Just have babies more than I would ever know. <laughs> and my dad, he was big into these old uh, muscle cars. He loved a Chevy Chevelle. According to him, he wrecked three or four of them brand new, out drinking, having him a good time. And then he told it. And then have to walk to work or thumb to work. <laughs> and then save up his money and buy another one. 
but I remember this Chevy Chevelle he had, it was blue. It had uh, the metallic blue, the mag tires on the back. And he'd always let, let me sit in it and he'd start that son of a bitch up and it'd just vibrate. He'd, he'd hit the gas pedal, ramp it up a little bit. Ha, damn! You such a ring, 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 ring. It felt like every muscle in your body was jerking. I think that's the reason why I don't like rides. <laughs> I hate carnival rides. But uh, we moved uh, away from uh, the White House after I was a year old to a daddy bottle trailer, and they moved it to a trailer park. Uh, probably about th two or three miles. Uh, yeah, about two or three miles from Mama Shortridge and Papa Shortridge. And uh, I remember us living there until after the big flood we had in 77. After that, Daddy, Daddy sold the place, sold it to my uncle. And then we, uh, we moved up there, or we bought, uh, well, we moved up behind my mom's. Mama Shortridge. Uh, Daddy bought my uncle's trailer. He went through a divorce and everything, so he sold it to Dad. But when we was living in the trailer park, I mean, we had some good times. I, I remember uh, uh, there was some neighbor, neighbors down the street from us called, uh, they were Campbells. So they knew Glenn Campbell. We was outside playing us kids one time and Glenn Campbell and Tandy Tucker rode up. Now what do you do him? Cause I was raised on country music and gospel. I mean, that's all played in our house. Tammy Wine, Ed, Loretta Lynn, George Jones, uh, all the old classics. And as in a white Corvette, Man, Tanya Tucker stepped out. She had a little mini skirt on, showed that ass, and here I'm just a kid, and I'm just like, no, nah, look at that ass. And they seen us kids out there, and they came up, shook her hands and everything, and she bent over to shake her hands, and I seen them, but teddies. I'll tell you what, I might have been a young boy, but I had stuff going on down there in the bottom of my body. I'm like, what the hell is that? Later, I'll find out what, uh, what that's all about. We also had a neighbor in a trailer park. God damn, she looked like a model. Her and her husband always go to the lake over at South Houston and fish. And she'd come down, every time they caught something, bring me a big old batter, trout, bass, and all that. Oh, Lord of mercy. Yeah, the fish was great, and looking at her body was great, too. So I was learning at a young age that there was something about the female anatomy that I was really liking. I know uh, Mom told a story about how her, that lady, and a couple other women of the Trello Park was watching us kids play. And coal miners was coming by, seeing her out in her little bikini, because that's all she wore. And it's summertime, that's all I one more, a little bikini. Ass chicks and tits. Woo! These motherfuckers almost wrecked because there's a building across the road where a lady had, uh, she done hair. Beautician. And I don't know how many times these motherfuckers would drive up in her damn driveway trying to go around that curve seeing Sue sitting there half ass naked. These guys were talking about it at the mines, and Dad figured out who they was talking about. And he told Mom, he said, keep your ass in the house. Don't you be sitting out there and men driving around? Old Dad, he was a jealous type. Really jealous, bad jealous. Love his heart. So many men back in those days wouldn't let the women work, wouldn't let them come out, wouldn't even let them go get the damn mail. Ain't that some shit? But that was a different time, I guess. I know at that time, 
uh, uh, I was talking about the flood of 77. It was so bad, all the men, we watched from uh, a double wide up on the hill from us. They, everybody went up there, get away from the water. Uh, because we tried to leave. But state troopers stopped us because we was going to go to Mama's. Mama Shorts because she lived up on the hill. Uh, water was so bad, state troopers stopped us until we had to go around. Fight and go back, go somewhere else, go up on the hill somewhere. So all of us, went, all the kids and the women went up to the neighbors up on top of the hill there from across the road. And we sat there and watched as all the men that lived in a trailer park was ripping the underpinning out underneath their trailers. So that way they didn't get washed away. And while that's going on, I'm talking about it, it was like a raging river down through there. That was a damn 500 gallon propane tank that was smoking. Floating down the damn creek, well, river at that time. And they and women start screaming and hollering. Finally, the men seen it, and you should have seen it. it looked like ants running up the damn hill. They's all running up there trying to get behind trees and shit because there was a bridge there, and it was heading straight for it. And everybody's scared to death that it's going to hit that bridge and blow up. Well, it hit the bridge all right. Didn't blow up. Sucked that son of a bitch right underneath the bridge and shot it out the other end, and it's still smoking. So whether it blew up or whatever, don't know. But I know the our town, which I uh, which I forgot to tell you, it was named Roe, Roe, Virginia. Only has at the time had a post office. There was a little kind of convenience store where you can go in there and uh, you know get the candy out of the jar um, I remember going in there with daddy when he ordered his uh, 12 gauge shotgun out of the Sears and Roebuck catalog uh, they had all kinds of stuff it was, like I said it was like one of these old stores you see out of the early 1900s or 1800s where they had blankets and clothing and odds and ends and plus the post office inside. Uh, if I bore you all, I'm sorry. I mean, this is, this is what my my daughter told me that, you know, people might be interested in some of my old stories, but, uh, let's see, what else can I remember that young? Oh, we had a neighbor. She knows who I'm talking about. She watches this. This is one of the living at Trouble Park. Her name was Kim. And apparently I made her mad. I was on my big wheel. I'm riding down, you know, down the road and everything, a bunch of other kids of us riding her damn big wheels. Apparently, me and her got into it, and she smacked me so goddamn hard on my bare back. I couldn't breathe. I ran to the house, you know, kid. <laughs> oh, mommy, mommy, mommy. Mommy, that bitch hit me. My mom was like, who? What bitch? And I told her to kill but here comes my, they're dragging my ass down there, stomping and uh, can't breathe. Uh, knocked on her mom's door and told her what she did. Her mom yanked her ass up and bust her ass right there. I was like, damn. Cause mom spun me around and showed that big ass hand print on my back. I didn't want to play Kim no more. Well, long after that, we moved, thank gosh. But later on in school, me and her were cool. We were cool. She's, she's smart as a tack. Has a great life. Me on the other hand, I fucked up, I guess. But, uh, went, like I said, it wasn't long after the flood, we moved uh, up behind Mama shortages. And, and you know, 
I think that was the best thing for us because, I mean, it was up on a hill away from, from any big ass floods. Plus, it was close to my mom and papa. Like I said, daddy went out there every day to check on them. Then, as I got older and bigger, I was able to go out there, you know, get your wood and coal and sit there on the porch and listen to papa talk about when he, uh, you know, worked in the mines or when he, uh, uh, he was the first taxi operator and owner of Buckhannon County. And I didn't know it. And he told me. I was like, what? Papa was a sick man, though. He'd got stomach can had stomach cancer when I don't I don't know when, but it was uh, you know, when he was younger and he uh they had to take out part of his stomach. And Papa was a tall, skinny man. I say he'd about six foot four, five. Shit, if you weighed 120 pounds soaking wet, but he done something. But he he would he talk about the kids, you know, my aunts and uncles, and mama. Now they they good Christian. They big Christian people. They were. And. Uh, Mama uh, shortage, she'd always make, uh, she'd always be making some cakes and pies. And when you went in there, or, you know, when you went to my grandparents' house, first thing, you got hungry? Want something to eat? That's on both sides, even Mama Johnson was like, hey, you hungry, want something to eat? And poor old Mom Johnson, Lord, she makes some of the best homemade chili beans. You, oh, I ain't never had any no better. And cornbread, oh, oh. When my brother was born, he was real sickly for a couple years, two, three years. And I stayed with my Mom Mom Johnson a lot. Mom Mom Johnson taught me how to cuss. She taught me, she's the one taught me how to draw. I'm not real good at it, but she's the one taught me how to draw and paint and play games. And my uncles on mom's side taught me how to hotwire a car, how to play poker, how to cheat a poker. <laughs> I don't cheat. I'm just that damn good. <coughs> taught me how to shoot pool. But, I, but me and my brother, we, well, we never really got along growing up. I always liked being to myself. I do my own thing, draw, read, watch TV, you know, go out in the woods, you know. But my brother, he was meaner than a fucking strapping snake. He was always into something. He'd do something, mom be like, now, which one of y'all did? I mean, like it was him. I was over here doing such and such. And he'd be like, with me. So mom, like, I know it's one of you two, so I'm gonna bust both y'all's asses till I get the right one. And you know, I carried a mini ass whooping for, and I didn't do a damn thing because of that lying shit. Me and my brother been close a little bit off and on. But off and on, we've had fights, man. Terrible fights. But next thing that I, you know, kind of remember is like when I went to kindergarten for the first time, you know, in school. Uh, Mom dropped me off, and I, I was sitting there and eating breakfast and stuff, and you know, hear all these other kids are crying, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. I'm just sitting there telling Mom, go on. Go. Leave me alone. <laughs> I want to experience this. Whatever this is, I want to experience it. And I tell you, kindergarten, that, what I can remember, it was nice. Uh, we had really good teachers all the way up through high school. Except there was one teacher I had in third grade, that fucking bitch, Miss Hale. Hateful bitch. 
because where we lived in the trailer park, when I started school, I went to Garden Elementary. So when we moved, uh, just two miles up the road, I ended up going to street school. It's just a little school, probably about a half a mile from the house. Hell, we walked to school. I didn't ride no bus. I didn't ride a bus until we went into, uh, I guess you consider, it was still elementary because we only did uh, third and fourth grade there, I think. Or second and third, third and fourth. But anyway, I was only there for a couple years because it was only a two, two room schoolhouse. So it was third grade, third and fourth. Then fifth grade, you went down to, back down to the elementary. But that woman, Miss Hill, she taught my daddy. Cause like I said, it's a little two room uh, schoolhouse. Had, had a cafeteria and bathrooms and all that. But when I was in school there, man, I tell you, Miss Hill, she was a bitch, man. She hated me. I guess it was cause daddy, cause dad hated her. When Dad and I had her as a teacher, he was like, oh, son, you're in for a trip. Oh, Lord, she's going to give you help. One time in class, she told us, no, it was right after Christmas. You know, everybody bringing their toys to school, bringing a toy or something. Well, I brought a fire hat because I got a little fire truck with a fire hat, and I wore my fire hat. She crawled my ass and took my fire hat away from me. You know I never got that damn thing back. You're crazy. But there was a guy there at the school when I was, I guess, fourth grade. He's a boy. He's a big old boy, way bigger than me. I had so much to beat my ass every day. I want money. I want lunch money. I'd take that ass. You know, finally, the principal, he knew that. He called mom, told her what was going on. Daddy woke me up one night when he got off work because Dad didn't take a shower at the mines. He always came home and took a shower. It's 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the morning. He wakes me up and here I'm looking at that black face and scared the shit out of me. And he said on the bed, he told me, he said, I heard you been getting your ass with at school. I said, yeah. Why? I said, he wants my lunch money. He said, you giving it to him? I said, hell no, I ain't giving him my lunch money. He said, well, I'm going to tell you what. If you don't go back to school and whip his ass, every time he whips your ass, and I find out about it, I'm whipping your ass. So I knew right then, somebody get fucked up tomorrow. I went to school the next day, and I seen Roger get off the bus. I jumped at somebody, and I beat the shit out of him. I beat him so damn bad. I hit him I, to the damn principal, Mr. Desk, pulled me off of it. That boy was mean. He was so mean when uh, Mr. Deskin sent him home. He got so mad at his daddy, threw a damn knife at his daddy. So they sent him to a reform school. That's when I started learning. That's where I learned how to fight. I had no choice. Bullies, man. Can't stand a fucking bully. I know uh, we used to play softball, you know, play ball, baseball, and all that. Come to find out, Mr. Deskin's principal would always tell us, you know, whoever's playing behind catcher, stay way back. Because a couple of years before that, there was a boy got hit in the back of the head. He was too close to the guy that's swinging with the bat, hit him in the back of the head, and it killed him. Or they talk about that. They, they were scared to death when we was out there playing baseball and anything. I know one time we was out and it was cold, cold, snowing. We had school back then when it fucking snowed. And one of the balls was playing kickball went in, the, went in the creek. Well, it froze over. You know, I, I'm a big kid. I, was, I wasn't no skinny fucker. I, I was a fat boy. I was a fat kid. Everybody made fun of me over it. 
still a fat boy, I guess. I stepped up there on that ice, wasn't cracking or nothing to get the ball. <coughs> All of a sudden, I picked up the ball. It cracked, and I went under that damn water. Jesus Christ, was a fucking cold. It started pushing me down up underneath it, and I'm trying to beat, 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 beat. Finally, I was kicking and stuff, and it busted open where I could get out. I got out, Lord mercy, I was drowning head to toe. Like I said, it was so cold. I mean, I started just freezing up. And here, you know, I went into the school, and Mr. Deskins, he was not only a principal, he was a teacher. He asked me what happened, I told him, instead of sending my ass home, or at least calling mom and dad, there's only, like I said, a half a mile up the road to bring me some clothes. He set my ass beside a thing called a radiator. A radiator heater. And I sat there all damn day. <laughs> One side of me be hot and the other side freezing dead. I'd have to spin around. I finally dried out, but good God. That sucked ass. But before we, we moved up there, I forgot to tell you this. When I, this is when I was back in kindergarten down there at Garden High, or Garden Elementary, sorry. Uh, they had one of them 20 foot sliding boards. And I guess back then I still had a hanker, you know, I was like, oh. I was following one of them girls up the, uh, up the sliding board. She had, she had a dress on and I'm like, I see her dainties. Ooh. I got to the top with her. I don't know what the hell happened. But that bitch shoved me off. I fell and broke my fucking arm. It, my left arm. It was so damn bad. Fucking bone was popping up. Went in there screaming and crying. The teacher seen it, took me in. Now there was a fucking rescue squad and fire department right across the road from the school. What did they do? They called my mom. And my mom wasn't driving in. She didn't have a license. So, my daddy had to get out of work, had to call him at the mines, to drive all the way from the mines, up Garden Creek, to get mom, and then come back and get me. And I'm laying in there, fucking pain and bleeding and shit. Now it's fucked up. They finally got me to the hospital. I don't remember much, except they putting it in a cast. And they kept me overnight. You know, back then, when you got sick or hurt, I didn't just put a band-aid or a cast on and send your ass home. They actually, you know, made you stay in the hospital for a day or two to make sure you was okay. I hurt so bad that night, my hands swollen so bad that it was actually coming over top of the fucking cast because I broke my wrist in two places and also fractured that arm radius correct shit I can't remember what it's called but anyway the bone and for six weeks I was in the cast man you talking about some itching shit if you've ever had a cast on you know what I'm talking about you itch itching places you never thought and you can't scratch through that shit back then it was hard it was hard as a damn rock so finally mom got me a clothes hanger I was able to take it in there and gently scratch. I said, like, oh, yes, yes. Oh. But once it came time to get the cast tuck off, they used a, a saw. It got a, little, got a little round blade on it, a little teeth on it. Kind of like a Dremel. Anybody knows what that is. And they just cut and cut and up past my wrist because it went all the way around my hand. Then when it got to my wrist here, I think it started shooting out blood. I mean, it just kept bleeding, blood everywhere, blood, blood, blood. I'm like, oh, oh, I feel that shit, man, what are you doing? That's all right, and he took these things and pried it open, and I got a scar all the way up my arm. Why motherfucker cut my damn arm? Didn't have to use stitches, they always oh, just bandaged it up, it'll be all right. But, yeah, 
Where the food some shit. Here I had a cut. I got a cousin. Her name's Janet. I'd always walk me and her walk to school together and home together. And I didn't know until we was in high school. But it made sense because at the time, her daddy didn't want her to have anything to do with me. I'm like, we're fucking cousins. Why not? I'm a wife. And, and she couldn't understand it either. We played together. We ate together. Walked to school together. Did homework together. I mean... We were tight. But once we got in high school, she told me that she was adopted. That her parents told her she was adopted. I was like, oh, wow. Fuck. I wouldn't have never known that because she looks a lot like her mom. And then I told her, I said, that makes sense now. That's the reason why they didn't want us to get close together. Because I guess they was afraid I was going to try to fuck you or something. And she's my cousin. And I still consider her my cousin. She may not be blood, but by God damn, she family. But yeah, the whole time growing up, first, I guess, five, six, seven, eight years of my life, it was rough. Because, you know, daddy was always going to work. You know, Papa Shortridge, he passed away in 77. That was hard. That was real hard seeing my Papa there like that. I think that was the first dead person I ever seen. He was such a good man. Lord, they was thousands of people away. His, and he's way. Back then, they kept him up for two or three nights. He was people all over the place. They had him at a home neck funeral home. Then he brought him down to the church we used to go to, uh, Row Pentecostal Holiness Church. That's where he went to church, him and Mom all the time. And then there's a family, family the cemetery up behind it. And uh, what made me feel so bad up there, you know, I'm, I'm standing beside of a headstone and I accidentally lean on it and a damn thing fell over. God, I felt so bad. I caught an ass chew and all that too. But they was able to put it back up. I know one time, Daddy took us over, uh, over to my Uncle Clarence. He raised bees. I'm real allergic to bees. Well, I didn't know there was any damn bees over there across the creek. I went across the creek and right in the damn middle of that beehive. I was after a ball or something. And you see what balls do to me? Get me in fucking trouble. All of a sudden, goddamn dad squalls out at me. Uh-huh. And, you know, my aunt squalling and everybody, you know, my cousin squalling. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? My uncle tells them all, shut up. My uncle comes over there at the edge of the creek with the board I went across. He said, now Rodney, what I want you to do, I want you to walk over here to me. Bring me that ball and I'll play ball with you. I'm like, okay. So I walked over there and he picked me up. Oh, I got down as soon as he set me down, he smacked me on the ass. He said, if you ever go around my bees again, boy. I'm like, sorry, sorry, I didn't know, I didn't know. Well, see, I've done some stupid shit. But, you know, you, you sit back and you think on it. All them ass whoopings. <laughs> for ones, the ones I deserve, yeah. The ones I didn't, wow. Uh, the way you treat as a young person reflects on how you grow up and the type of person you become. I try to be a good person, but 
Um, I guess I'll end it there because I've been 34 minutes of slapping my lips. So I'll think about some more other shit I've done when I was younger and keep running with it. See how it goes. And, you know, anybody's watching, you know, thank y'all. I do appreciate it. Uh, I'm sure everybody else has went through the same thing. But y'all have a good one. Talk to you soon.